Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video we're making a parking game. Let's get started. So once you've got onto a blank construct today, first thing you need to do is make a car. So we're going to insert a new object, scroll down to get to sprite, and it's always a good idea to name it. So we're going to name it car. Now from this screen here, you can either draw your own car, and if you are making your own car, it's really important that it faces to the right. That is what we call zero angle in construct. So when you add the car behavior, it will move as expected. If you have an area direction, your car is going to move very, very funny. Now you can use control V to paste something in from the internet, just like I'm going to do right now. Or you could use the folder icon to bring your own car in, but remember just to rotate your car so it's facing the right way. In that case, it is like this for me. Now I do need to remove the background on mine, so I'm going to use the bucket tool. I'm going to have quite a high tolerance and just make sure that flood fill is ticked on. That means it's not going to get rid of the whites in my headlights here. And just click and let's make sure that I am on a blank tool. There we go. And that seems to have got rid of most of it, but it has got rid of my headlights as well. And after a bit of playing around, I've got my car, a little bit of white edges around the bottom, but that doesn't really matter to me for this video. Once I've got my car, next one I'm going to do is crop it and then sort the hitbox. At the moment, the hitbox is quite large, which means if I hit another car on the map and it crosses over this threshold, it's going to count as me hitting it, which is not really fair to the player. So instead, I'm going to right click on here and just do guess polygon shape. Now this does a, a pretty good job, but you can see it's still messed up quite a bit. First of all, I don't want to hitbox quite this far, I'm just going to shrink it in. It's always nice to be a bit more generous to your player. Your player will feel much better if they just miss a collision where they should have actually got hit, but they survived. As opposed to getting hit by something that they think is a load of nonsense and shouldn't have been the case. So even having this back bit here actually doesn't make a huge difference. If it does, you can obviously bring it in a little bit, but don't feel like this needs to be perfect. Once we've got a hitbox in place, then we can hit the blue X. And we've now got a car. I recommend you shrink your car down quite a bit. Probably about to this size, because again, we want to put lots of stuff in this level. And it feels really small at the moment. When we start playing, this car will feel a lot bigger. So let's add on the nice easy one first. We're going to add on the car behavior. So I'm going to scroll down and find the car behavior. And once you've added the car behavior, you get loads of new setting that appears on the left hand side that you can adjust and change to make your car feel the way that you want it to. We're not going to change any of them just yet. We may look at them a bit later, but we are going to add our second behavior. And this one's going to be the scroll to behavior. This just means the camera is now going to follow our car, which is really, really useful if you've got a much bigger level. So we're just going to add that one on as well. Now, before we test this, because we could drive this around, but driving it around in an empty white screen is very confusing. Going to add in a background now we're going to insert a new object scroll down to tiled background i'm just going to call this tarmac click anywhere and just before you can draw your own or i found this really nice road texture that i'm just going to copy and use for today so once i've got my road texture in i'm going to press the x i'm going to place it in the top right corner now as i expand it it will cover my player so i'm just going to right click and send this to the bottom using the z order and then just fill out the rest of my level to the bottom right. So now I've got my lovely tarmac in place. Now I've got my car in place. I can do a test and start driving. So I can use the arrow keys to move around and the level moves around as well. So far so good, but not very exciting. So let's add in the parking element. For the parking side, we are going to need a space to park in. So I'm just gonna insert a new object, scroll down to Sprite and call it parking space click anywhere and this time I'm going to use the folder to import an object I've already saved and this is a little parking space that I made earlier I'm also going to duplicate the animation because I actually want a second version of this so my first version is going to be the standard space but I also want a green variation of this so let's find a green that I like and this is going to be if you've successfully parked it's going to turn green instead now we can also rename this so I'm going to name this parked and I'm going to rename this not parked. I'm sure, there's better names that we could think of, but for now, this will do. And I'm just going to click and just place it on my level for now, just here. Now, when it comes to coding this, we do this via the event sheets. Now, when it comes to our event sheet, the easiest way we can set this up is by just checking if the car 
is overlapping another object and then set this to be our parking space. Then we can turn the parking space green. Now some of you are probably shouting already at the screen that this is going to cause some issues and not work the way we want it to. And I'll show you what I mean by this. Before we do that, let's just fit up the other side where we can just copy and paste this. And we're just going to right click to invert this and just set the animation back. Now when you set the animations, if you do shift to first, it will show you all animations. So this just makes it much easier to select the one that you want. So let's do a test and let's see the problem with this code in particular. So I'm moving over to my park space and I go on it and first of all I need to move this to the back but you can see that it only takes a small part of the car to be touching the space and so let's see how close I can get to trigger it, there we go, and now I've parked. And that's not really in the sport of this game whatsoever. So we're going to have to change a few things to get this working. So going back to our layout, we're going to right click and insert a new object and we're going to grab a sprite and this time we're going to call it a parking checker. Click anywhere and we're going to get a really bright colour, in this case I'm going to go for a red and fill it all in and exit. Then what we're going to do is shrink this down to be fairly small and I'm going to place one on every single tyre of the car and if you need to you can right click and zoom in or you can use control and the scroll wheel to do the same job. And I want four of these on each corner of the car. And I'm going to use this as my way to check if we've parked instead of making use of the car itself. Now we can make these invisible but for now I want to keep them visible so you can see what they're doing. And we need to add a behavior to these. So I'm going to right click, add a behavior and I'm going to add the pin behavior. Now if you think of a push pin, when you push it into the wall, it sticks to stuff and we want this to stick to our car. And we can set this up in our event sheet. So I'm going to our event sheet and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete these two lines of code for now. Let's start fresh and I'm going to do system on start of layout, parking checker and then scroll down, pin to object and car and then just hit done. So now these have attached to our car. Next we're going to add an event system and every game tick and then we need to go to the edge of this so not where the system is just slightly across right click I'm going to add in a sub vent underneath. Now this is also going to be system and this time we're looking for the for each and we want to go for each of the parking checkers. This means it's going to run the code separately for each one individually instead of doing them as a group. And then we're going to get the circular arrow, right click on that, and we're going to add one more sub event. I'm going to check if the parking checker is overlapping another object, and this being our parking space. So at the moment, we're taking each parking checker and checking if they're overlapping the space. Now, we could do this in one go, but I've done this in a slightly different way just to give you a bit more control later on if you wanted to but I'm going to add in a new variable. So I'm going to right click just anywhere, you'll get access to global variables and we just want to do checker count. And this is going to start at zero. Now every game tick, we're going to add an action system. We're going to set the value of our checker count to zero. And then for every parking checker that's overlapping the space, we're going to go to system, add to, our check counter by one. This means we know exactly how many of our parking checkers are touching the parking space. And again, this just gives you that little bit of extra control. You might want the parking space to change a different color of half of them are on compared to all of them. Again, you've got that level of control now. Now we also need to apply this to our animation that we set up. So we're gonna add an event. I'm gonna just say system, compare variable, if check count equals four, add action, parking space, and then we can set the animation to parked. We can then right click on the side here, add the else, and we can do the opposite. And that can be nice and easy by just copy and pasting, and then just change the animation to not parked. Now there's another requirement I want to do before we test this, and I don't want this to be active straight away. I want to add in another condition, another rule that must be met. And this is going to be on our car this time. We're going to compare the speed. 
and I want it to be less than five. Less than five I'm just using in case the car is just slowly rolling and you haven't quite completely stopped. I'm giving the player that little bit of extra benefit of doubt, but for the most part, you should be stopped before we check if you're parked. So let's do another test. So I'm gonna move now and I'm gonna move over to the parking space. And you can see it turns green because all parking checkers are in and I've stopped. We do need to fix our car being underneath. So let's quickly fix that before I forget. And this is really simple. We can either go to our layout and just simply send the car to the front. Or because we're gonna add more objects, we could even say that every tick, car, and then scroll to the bottom, move to the top. I also said about these parking checkers, they can be a little bit annoying. So all we're going to do is click on the parking checkers on the right side, and then just set initially visible to off. That means they're not gonna be visible in our game anymore. And we can do a second test. And now you can see no more parking checkers. We should also be able to go over the space now. And once we're over and our speed's slow enough, we've now parked. We'll probably want to make this a little bit smaller to make this a bit more challenging, because at the moment this is quite a nice big parking space. But let's also add in some extra collisions. For this, we're going to right click, insert a new object, go to sprites. And for our sprite name, we're going to put obstacles. Make sure you click on sprites and press insert, click anywhere. And now I need another car. And I've taken it a step further and I've actually added in a range of different cars. Just obviously make sure they're all facing to the right and make sure you've checked the hitbox of all of them. I've not gone this far because that takes a bit of time to do, but obviously if you're making this for a game for yourself, you definitely want to make sure all the hitboxes are correct. Once you're done, we can hit the X and then we can start putting these cars into our game. Now you can see that my car's a little bit smaller. So I might want to just resize it next to the current car to make it a little bit bigger. And then once you've got it the same size, what you want to do is start using this to build a small level where there's lots of different cars that might get in the way that we might bump into. So I'll tell you what, I'll time lapse this and I'll get back to you very shortly. And with a little bit of time later, we now have our car set up. So this obviously is going to add quite a bit of challenge to our game, making it much harder for our player to navigate much easier around our level. I've also added just free parking spaces so the player can choose which one they want to choose. And before we add in the sort of logic to add in some collision for this, there's one more obstacle I want to add and that is just one or two moving cars to the game. Moving cars obviously add that additional challenge because they are moving. So how do we add one of those? Well, what I'm gonna do is actually take my obstacle object and clone it. So we've got a second one. And I'm gonna, first of all, add one in. Now I want a car that moves up and down this lane here. So first of all, I'm gonna change my animation. I want one that stands out quite well. So the orange car is quite good for that. I'm gonna right click, add a behavior. And this time I want the sign behavior. Now you can find the sign behavior right near the bottom and just press add. And then you get all these lovely settings here that appear. Now, first of all, we don't want horizontal movement. We do want vertical. And if you're on contract premium, you can preview this. I'm not sure why this is a contract premium feature. It should be for just everybody because without this, it makes it much harder to work out how much room is 50 pixels. 
Um, but if you're not, then obviously it's just playing around, try and error running the game. I'm going to set this value up to say 400. Now if I preview this, this car is now moving backwards and forwards. It's quite fast, so I'm going to set the period up to about 8 seconds. This will halve its speed. And now we've got a car to avoid. We could probably even get away with even slower than that. And that gives us time to actually go around this corner if we want to. So this might be slightly faster than maybe going around the other way. So it's something that we can look at. Um, we could also give it to another car. So I've just spotted this blue car here. And what I might want to do is to get my second obstacle. I'm going to change the animation so my two cars that are moving are different to each other. So let's go for animation two. I'm going to rotate the car. And what I want is it going in and out of this space here. Um, by the way, this grid that I've added, you can just click anywhere and you've got this snapped grid. So I'm going to turn it off now. But, um, but that's really useful for setting up stuff like this where everything's kind of in a grid anyway. It just snaps everything much more easier for you. So if we preview now, we'll change this from vertical to horizontal. And let's try again. We should have a car that moves along and then drives back into that space there. And just about, I need to move it back just a little bit. So I'm going to shuffle it back just a little bit. And I can even be really mean to the player. And I'm going to add one more option where they could park here if they wanted to. But bear in mind, they've got to park before that car gets back. So that is our game level set up. However, we do need to add in some final logic to this. So we're going to go to our event sheet. I'm going to add in a brand new event and just say car. Scroll down on collision with another object and we're going to choose obstacle then we're going to add an action car now normally what happens when we collide with an object is we destroy it but we don't really destroy cars not just could disappear so what we're going to do is we're going to do two things we're going to set the default controls to be off so now you can no longer move the car we're going to take the car and we're going to go to the car behavior and stop so the car doesn't move and then we're going to take the car scroll down and this time I'm going to move past the car settings I'm going to add a shake a camera shake mag 20 for 0.4 that will do so the screen will shake and then we're going to wait just one second and restart the game and this will give quite a nice effect and feel quite right for a car game you could also add audio to this where you get a sound of a car being smashed which would be quite cool um, but this is what we're going to set up for now now this only works for our obstacles and our obstacles too. So obstacles two are the moving obstacles. Now we could just copy and paste this whole code and change that one line of code. But what we're gonna do is right click on this green arrow and make this an or block. Then we're gonna copy and paste this line of code and then just swap out the object for obstacles two. And this just means that we get both bits of code working without another event being used. And this is it. You You've now got a fully working parking game set up in just seven lines of code. The final thing we want to do is when you finish parking, we can just add a check. So I'm just going to wait just one second. And then I'm going to add another action on system. And this is where I want to go to next or previous layout and just next. And then what you can do is go to layout one and you can duplicate it. And now you've got level two that you can change. We've got level one, level two, and we can keep going and making small changes to this, making the game much harder. I also mentioned you can change the car settings. So at the moment, the car settings are designed to make the car really, really easy to drive. These parking games, they always used to give you the worst possible car to control ever. So you could change stuff like making the deacceleration slower. So you've got to think a bit more carefully about how fast you're going and stopping a bit more. Um, so lots of stuff you can play around with. But as always, thank you for watching. I'll leave a copy of this project in the description if you want to try it out for yourself. And I'll see you in the next video.